Hello everyone, it's Karen here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get a more accurate TDEE step-by-step. -step. I will also talk about the limitation of the current online TDEE calculators and uh, what we can do to minimize those inaccuracies. However, we can still use those online TDEE calculator as a starting point, and then we can work from there. If you only have a vague idea of what total daily energy expenditure is, which is TDEE, and uh, you can watch my previous video, which I talk more in detail about it. Currently, the most common way for people to predict their TDEE is through online TDEE calculator. It predicts your TDEE based on your input data. There are some upsides of these methods. It's fast, it's convenient, and it's free. On the other hand, the downside of this method is that it can be very inaccurate. Most of the online TDEE calculators will ask about your gender, age, height, weight, activity level, and body fat percentage, which is optional. The online TDEE calculator consists of two parts. The first part is your basal metabolic rate. Except for the activity level, all data points are used for calculating your BMR and the activity level is used for estimating your activity thermogenesis, which is the second part. Your predictive TDEE will be the sum of your predictive BMR, activity thermogenesis, and the thermal effect of food, which you have no way to customize. The inaccuracy and limitation of these methods comes from all these three parts. They are, first, a very inaccurate BMR if there is no body fat percentage input. Second, a very generalized self-evaluate multiple choice for your activity level. And last, the calculator provides no customization when it comes to the thermal effect of food. Let's take a look at the inaccuracy comes from the BMR part first. Notice here, the body fat percentage is optional on the calculator. However, it is actually the key factor to determine your basal metabolic rate. A pound of muscle at rest burns 6 calories per day, and a pound of fat at rest burns about 2 calories a day. So, if the two people with the same weight having different body fat percentage, the one with higher lean body mass will have higher basal metabolic rate. Therefore, if you want to know a closer starting point of your accurate TDEE, it's best for you to know your body fat percentage. Now let's take a look at the activity level part. The calculator simply gives you five tiers of activity level to choose from. The problem is, one may think he or she is already doing some very intense exercises, but it's actually only some moderate exercises from the calculator's point of view. Also, if we have been doing a similar type of exercises for a long time, which made our body adapted to the exercise intensity. As a result, our body became more efficient that it burns less calories than it used to when doing the same amount of exercise. Therefore, the self-evaluate activity level can be very off as well. Lastly, the thermal effect of food. We know that our body will burn different amount of calorie based on what type of food we eat, but the online TDE calculator has no way to take that into account. To sum it up, the fast and convenient online TDE calculator can only give you a generalized predictive TDEE, and uh, it is not accurate. In this case, what can we do to get a more accurate TDEE? Let me show you the steps I take to get to a more accurate TDEE. We will be using the online TDE calculator to get a starting reference point. And here's the entire diagram of the steps to get a more accurate TDEE. You can take a screenshot of it for future reference. The step 1 and step 2 are for you to minimize the inaccuracy from the online TDEE calculator. Step 1. Measure the body fat percentage. There are many different ways to measure one's body fat percentage, such as skin fold caliper, bioelectrical impedance scale, DEXA scan, air displacement plethysmography, and hydrostatic weighing, etc. If you can't find a way to measure your body fat percentage, skip the whole step 1 and start from step 2. Based on what I know, the skin fold caliper and bioelectrical impedance scale methods are easier to access and cheaper, but they are less accurate compared to the other three. 
However, they can still be pretty accurate when done right. If you want to know more about these testing methods, I have an article link in the description. Personally, I'm pretty familiar with the bioelectrical impedance scale because I do use Embody scale a lot. I have an home used Embody scale at home and、uh, I really like it. But I have to say, it does need to take a lot of steps and you need to follow a lot of rules to get a more accurate result. This was my Embody testing result from earlier this year. I will be using this body fat percentage to calculate my predictive TDEE. By the way, the body fat percentage that your home bioelectrical impedance scale provided is probably way off, so I don't suggest using this number to calculate your predictive TDEE. Step 2 Use the TDEE calculator to calculate your predictive TDEE. Fill in your data, including your body fat percentage, if you have the number or just leave it if you don't. When it comes to choosing your activity level, I would suggest you to select the right activity level based on your actual activity level to see if this predictive TDEE makes sense to you. If it does, take this number as your reference starting point. If it seems too high or if you have been exercising for a long time, select the lower activity level. Take the new result as your reference starting point of your TDEE. Once you get familiar with the online TDE calculator, then you will kind of know what activity level you should choose. A quick summary here. In order to minimize the inaccuracy from the online TDE calculator, it's best to know your body fat percentage and、uh, to choose the right activity level for you based on not only your real activity level, but, but also the calculator's standards for the activity levels. Step 3. Track your calories. Set your predictive TDEE as your calorie goal for a week. You don't need to eat to your exact maintenance every day. As long as the average of your daily calorie intake throughout the week is at your maintenance calories. Step 4. Weighing every day and record your weight. Calculate your average weight by the end of the week. You should weigh yourself under the same condition every day to minimize the error. Step 3 and 4 should be done together. Step 5. Do step 3 and 4 all over again. Step 6. Compare your average weight between this week and the previous week. Now you have two kinds of scenario. Scenario A If the weight difference is within a half pound, then you probably have found your total daily energy expenditure. But just to be careful, keep monitoring your calorie intake and、uh, weight fluctuation for another week to make sure this is about the right TDEE for you. Scenario B If the weight difference is more than half pound, then you need to go to the next step. Step 7 Fine tune your predictive TDEE. In order to get a more accurate TDEE based on how much weight you have changed, add some calories to your previous TDEE if you lose weight, or minus some calories if you gain weight. I suggest you to adjust your calories intake no more than 100. Step 8 Do step 5 again with your latest predictive TDEE. Step 9. Do step 6 again until you reached scenario A. As you can see, if you can get a more accurate TDE from the start through the online TDE calculators, then it's faster and easier for you to go through those steps and、uh, get to your final, more accurate TDE result. Once you get your more accurate TDE result, you can adjust your calories intake based on your weight loss or weight gain goals. The benefit of knowing a more accurate TDE is that you will have the confidence to take things slow. It's always better to take things slow when it comes to weight loss or weight gain. Having confidence in your plan is the key. Even if the needle is moving slowly, you know for sure that you are in the calorie surplus or deficits. So, you are less likely to doubt yourself. Not having doubt in yourself is a huge key to stay consistent. And staying consistent is one of the most important parts for people to have long term success when it comes to their health and fitness journey. That's it for today's video. Hope this is helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments and、uh, leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Remember to turn on the notification bell so you won't miss my future videos. I'll see you next time. Bye!